What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Unlockables podcast, the story of video games, the people who play them, and the memories made along the way. As always, I am your host, Eric, and I'd like to thank you for tuning in wherever, whenever, in time and space you might be located. It means so much to me that you're willing to spend a little bit of your hard-earned time each and every week checking in with us and seeing what is going on. Now, this week is very exciting because I am not doing a solo episode. That's the best news that anyone's ever heard, uh, probably in the last week, because you're getting tired of me being on solo episodes. I have an incredible guest with me today, and he is the definition of... BDE, that BDE energy. It is, of course, Mikey from the Big Drink Energy podcast. Mikey, how are you doing today, sir? I am doing very well, thank you. I'm very excited to be here. I'm, I appreciate you coming on, man. I knew we, we've we been circling each other, uh, you know, in, in our podcasting group of friends here for some time. So uh, I'm really excited to get you on. Uh, you have probably, I'm sure you've heard on every podcast experience you've made and um, also my wife's favorite named podcast nice. out of any of them. Uh, so <laughs> congratulations on that. She likes your name podcast better than mine. So it's absolutely wonderful. But uh, before we get going, we're going to talk about your show, talk about how you're doing and all, all the projects that you're working on. Uh, just want to like check in and break the ice uh have you been playing anything good lately yeah so um so i started a new game today i got a couple things going on i'm doing what i i have two games for what i call homework that i'm doing like like for a podcast (laughs) and then i started one like for fun today so for the podcast my homework i've been playing a lot of street fighter 2 and tekken 3 oh yeah yeah i'm going old with, with with those and like so I'm sure we can talk about that later, but um, I started today uh, The Last of Us for, for the first time, which is ah. nice. I've been meaning to play it, and I had a poll on Twitter, and I was going to play it like the first week of September, and I've just been too busy, and I played for exactly 15 minutes today. <laughs> um, and then I looked at the clock, I was like, ah, time to start dinner, and I haven't gone back. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Just enough to get through the sad parts and be sad. Oh, and it's like, yeah, oh. I, I, I got through that intro sequence. I got to the sad part. I was like, oh, is this what this game is? And then, <laughs> this is, yes. And then I paused it and I had to go grocery shopping, but I haven't gone back since. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. You're just like, all that awaits me is just sadness and tears, nothing else. But uh, that's interesting because uh, on my corner, yeah, I actually have a Street Fighter 2 staring me in the face that I have to play for homework as well. So uh, that is interesting. I can't yet. Uh, divulge what that that project is for yet it is coming down the pipeline soon though um but yeah i i do have uh street fighter i had to pick up and play streets of rage 2 god bless the sega console on the switch otherwise i never would have been able to play that so that's incredible uh and then i've just been uh, stuck in jrpg hell uh, not hell because I'm, I'm playing two of my favorite games i'm playing final fantasy 9 for for homework as well and then uh starting kingdom hearts chain of memories for the dubious infamous guiding keys series so uh that's pretty much all i've been doing and probably gonna check out overwatch 2 for better or for worse sometime this mm-hmm. week because they did shut down the overwatch one servers rest in peace and played a lot of that game uh when it first came out and it was one of the games that me and my wife actually uh bonded over when we started dating so we we have a lot of uh love and affection for that series so gonna go in and see if blizzard and activision ruined it with all the monetization schemes which is is probably inevitable given today it is the how can we monetize your hopes and dreams and exactly make as much money from them (laughs) so um no that's cool and yeah i'm I'm excited i know we're gonna talk about some fighting game stuff so Mm -hmm. i'm actually excited too but uh if you are ready uh i'd say let's start diving into the good stuff yeah let's get to it Mikey, I just want to first off ask about your show. Um, you yeah. host the Big Drink Energy podcast. Mm-hmm. Like I said, is the best name podcast on <laughs> in the podcast scene. I, no, no questions asked. Uh, which is a great show about energy drinks. And then you yeah. have um, 
two other kind of shows that you have in there, mm-hmm. O Two Heroes and Behind the Pencil. Yeah. I can't remember a- more than three things at once, so it's very <laughs> difficult for me. I apologize. Uh, so I just kind of want to kind of talk to you about where did you get the idea for energy drinks and then yeah. the other kind of spinoff shows and, and where did this whole thing come from? So I used to I used to hate energy drinks. I used to just like not stand them. But then I I went I went to school for education and, and I taught for a few years. I absolutely hated that. Long story short, I left teaching and then I got it's been my career for the last six years. I, I drive trucks now. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So y- you name it, I've driven it. I think the only thing I haven't driven is well, like not like like on the road. I, I've done training in it, but like the the big eighteen wheelers. I just my mind can't oh, figure yeah. out the, like like the way that the caboose works. Just like d- doesn't do That's that. So many but, wheels. <laughs> yeah, but um, so like for my job currently, I get up for work at three in the morning and then I work from like four to noon. Yeah. So I have, I have some wonky hours. So like energy drinks are like my saving grace for that. And, um, uh, f- for a while, whenever I was on the road w- with my company at the time, me and the other drivers, if we were like driving through middle of nowhere, like North Carolina and came across like a rinky dink gas station, <laughs> you would go in it's like, Oh, I've never seen this energy drink before. Try it. And then like, casually in the office we were just like oh do you have any new th- anything new this week like oh and then just like we would share energy <laughs> drink stories and then one day one of my coworkers, eric i was talking to him and and, and I, I found i found this cool one we we're talking and, and and he found one the same day and i was like dude we should we should we should record this we should make a podcast he's like <laughs> it's like who would listen to us i'm like it, it, it's an excuse it's an excuse for you and i like to hang out and just, and just like chat just like we don't have to do it. it's like okay exactly and then a couple of weeks later, my eventual co-host Alex joined the company, and it worked out because he was the only one with the recording equipment. Neither Eric or I had a microphone, so that never happened. And then, so we had plans. We we're like, okay, we're going to record on this Friday after work. And then Eric goes, "Can't go. I got to go to the gym." We're like, you, you can't go to the gym thirty <laughs> minutes later. He's like, no, I got to go to the gym. So then Eric immediately pissed off. And then wasn't involved at the beginning. So he was like, it was part of his idea. Like he and I came up with the idea together and just like no longer involved with it. And then our new friend, Alex, (laughs) he, he came over and and he's, he's like the official co-host. Alex and I run it together. Uh, Eric has since come back and I think been on two episodes as a guest, but I think it's very funny that just like he was on it from like day zero and then just disappeared. (laughs) Hey, at least he's still involved in two episodes, mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, that's got to count for yeah. something. And no, that's that's interesting. I didn't ever make the connection because mm-hmm. we, don't, we don't really talk about or maybe we do in the discords. I'm just really bad at discord and I'm I'll be yeah. there for like one day and then just check out for like eight days just because I'm working. And it's just like I don't think to check discord. Plus, I'm in like 14 discords and all the little oh, white yeah. dots give me give me so much anxiety as like, well, I open it. I see all the white dots. I'm like, well, I'm not talking to anybody today and just close it. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I, I can see the connection now because. I don't drive big trucks like that. I drive a, a tiny uh, yeah, a Kia with a four cylinder in it. So but I've realized it's as I've gotten older, like even driving for like longer than an hour or like up to clo- approaching an hour, mm-hmm. I get sleepy behind the wheel. I never mm-hmm. had this problem before. So I can see where I- I've started uh, knowing longer drives, having the energy drinks with me yeah. when I do drive. It's definitely a saving grace. But uh, no, no, that that's awesome. So was this your first foray into kind of podcasting or did yeah. you have any prior experience? Um, that, that's like my first real podcast. I remember in college um, and, and again, just like a little bit of a tidbit for what's going to come up. I, I used to run Super Smash Brothers, uh, like competitive tournaments. Ah, uh, Yes, I, I had these two guys show up to my event one day. Did, did, like I, I, I knew the regulars, like I knew the people who came every week. Never seen him before. Never seen him again. They're like, hey, you're in charge of this whole shindig, right? I'm like, (laughs) and he's like, the two of us, we have to do a project. They were like seniors in high school. And like, we need to do a project and like where we need to interview a local community leader. And we asked if we could (laughs) lead this group of people. And my teacher said, sure. So I, it was like a 40 minute interview I did with them for their podcast that they, that they did in high school. No idea who they were. Never heard it. They just <laughs> they came into the comic shop one day, uh, and then I want to say, like, I was still in college at that point. 
So then my, maybe five years later is when I started Big Drink Energy and like I got into actual podcasting. But <laughs> No, I think that'd be super cool. That'd be like such a crazy thing. Like let's just say for like whatever reason, Big Drink Energy like takes off, hits mainstream is yeah. like number one on the Spotify charts, like above Joe Rogan, above like literally everything. And then these two dudes that you recorded with like all these years ago <laughs> hear it and they're like, yo, we have like the first recording of this guy. And you know, then you could just make it an NFT and sell it for tons of money yeah, or something exactly. like that. Yeah. And, and like, I, I've asked around just like the people I, I've, I've met doing tournaments, like, do you know who those kids were? Do, do you remember <laughs> what this is? But like, they, they never came before and they never came after. So no one has any idea where that podcast went. But I would be curious to find it if I could. <laughs> it might be lost in time or maybe it'll resurface yeah. sometime. <laughs> like we said when famous, but uh, <laughs> you're just like, I'm over here organizing Smash Bros tournaments. I guess I'm a community leader now. Sure. Yeah. Go. That's... <laughs> Hey, if the teacher said it's okay, though, I guess that's yeah, yeah to <laughs> totally. Um, so in doing kind of this this podcast, like I said, I've, you've done um, energy drinks. You do O2 Heroes, which is about fighting games uh, yeah. behind the pencil, which was well, that's a great series. I hope that's coming back. Um, oh, th 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 that's that. funny. I, I don't I don't know if it will. Out of all of the podcasts, I think that's the one that I, I don't know <laughs> if I have anyone else to interview. I just like I <laughs> Well, I hope it comes back because it was very, very insightful how much mm -hmm. I learned through those, definitely. But um, nice. and, and it's also kind of funny because I, I normally ask this question about people's like if people's tastes have changed. And normally yeah. it's in like relation to like video games mm -hmm. or the things that they've played. But you the other component of your podcast is you literally try energy drinks. So I guess yeah. the question can go both ways. It's like, has your taste in energy drinks changed in, in over the years doing the podcast or have your taste in video games kind of kind of changed? Or you have any new opinions on either of those things? My the taste in energy drinks hasn't changed. I think I went from not liking them to liking them, and I, th that's <laughs> it's a about it. Significant change. Yeah, just yeah, probably the biggest change you could have. But um, my my taste in video games definitely changed. I remember in like when I was younger, I pretty much I didn't play any AAA games. I was like pretty much just a Nintendo kid because that's all we had at the house. And then in college, I got into like the esports world, and I started doing like like fighting games. And that was cool because I get to play with someone else and I got to meet people. And then literally today when I started The Last of Us, I thought I'm missing like decades worth of single player <laughs> content, like story driven AAA games that I just need to, I need to play. So just like, so that, that's, that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to try and transition into just like playing like the big games that I've missed out on for the last 10 years. Yeah, I mean, man, there, uh, especially in the last 10 years alone, there are definitely a lot of them. So mm -hmm. you, you certainly have your work cut out for you, sir. And uh, taking a big one off right away. Last of Us, man, yeah. that's a uh, are you playing the remaster version or the part one remake or what, how are you playing that? I you know which, which which version that is. I'm, I'm playing the PS4 version. Oh, OK. I, I, OK. So the remastered one. Yes, I I, I, I believe it, it says remaster underneath it. Yeah. OK. OK. One of the R words, which, are, you know, that gets kind of thrown around interchangeably yep. these days. But um, no, that's very cool. So do you have any in kind of doing these so things so far? Do you have any kind of favorite experiences doing the podcast so far? Yeah. So just like. So w when I started Big Drink Energy, it was an excuse for me to hang out with my coworkers and have fun and have a good time. And then eventually. Uh, I, I moved out of state and I'm no longer co-workers with them. And like we were doing the recordings like online for a little bit, which is fun. But then I think meeting a whole bunch of people and it went from like me and Alex hanging out to like having like a community and like a group of friends. I, I'm big on like the social interaction aspect of it, which I didn't think I would I would have from podcasting. But that's a lot of fun. Like I remember I met a whole bunch of people through like the Mario Kart night that that that, that we ran one time. I oh met a whole bunch yeah, of, yeah. And Mario Kart night was was a lot of fun. And then through that, I just met even more podcasts. And just like, I I get that doing an energy drink podcast doesn't have a lot of crossover potential, <laughs> but I still crossed over with a whole bunch of people, and I think that's super cool. I've even had like other podcasters like Ryan from List Off, just like he really likes Elden Ring. Elden Ring came out with an energy drink. He was like screw it i'm in i'll do an energy drink episode so and my, my co-host alex wasn't on that episode but he texted us afterwards and said it was one of his favorite episodes because it had almost nothing to do with energy drinks <laughs> um we it's like an hour and a half we talk about that specific energy drink for seven minutes and we spend the rest of it just like 
hanging out talking about stuff. And he was like, I like that. This is fun. Just just hang, hanging out and just like like doing a podcast. I'm like, cool. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed that. So I think meeting a lot of people that I didn't think I was I was going to meet is really exciting. And then m- most recently, this one, this one sticks out to me. Again, with Ryan, I, uh, he was nice enough to invite me on as a guest co-host on one of his episodes because Brian is on paternity leave right now. Mm-hmm. And we got to interview a comic book creator. He, he's like the CEO of a comic book company. Ryan knows how much I love comic books. Mm-hmm. And we're talking to him and and this guy, Pat, he casually mentions, oh yeah, uh, blah, blah, blah. I was at Chris Claremont's house one time and Ryan and I were just like, <laughs> throw our chairs back and we just yell what and we just start laughing uh for for people who aren't into comic books chris claremont is just like a massive name he was like Mm -hmm. maybe like one of the three biggest people like in the 80s he was like fundamental in making comic books like from being a kid's thing to being like okay these are serious like adult stories we're doing now he was like he's like one of the biggest names i if there was like a mount rushmore of comic books I don't think he would be number four. He'd be like five or six. He'd be like right there, right next to it right. though. So he's like a big, and he just, and our guest was like, yeah, I was just hanging out at Chris Claremont's house. <laughs> <laughs> just like, it blew my mind. Just like, that, that, that's very funny. It's just something you throw in there so casually is just be like, oh yeah, like I was like yeah. just hanging out with Shigeru Miyamoto the other day. It's just like, what, and, like, what do you, what do you mean? You were just in his house. <laughs> and, and he was, so he, he has a history, he has a book where he talks about like the history of video games. So he interviews a whole bunch of people and the whole podcast, he's very professional. He's not name dropping anyone. He's like, I interviewed this position at this company, or I spoke with this title or this producer. Oh, he wasn't yeah, yeah. saying any, so like not giving away names. And then just like, he just name drops the biggest name in comic books. It's like, it's, it's no big deal. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. No, I, and I, I listened to that episode too. I, I love that episode too, especially cause I believe he started like doing some voices that he did too. And like when he started yeah. doing the voices, I was, I was absolutely dying. I was like, Oh my God, this is absolutely perfect. Um, no, yeah, I'm, as anyone knows, I'm a huge fan of list off here. Um, any experience that you get to do with, with Brian and Ryan or yeah. the endless off podcast, their show is such a high quality that mm-hmm. uh, it's always a memorable experience, but yeah, that's dude, to me, that would just be like so crazy just be talking to somebody and just like literally like one up uh, someone you look up to, he's like, yeah, I just hung out with that person randomly. It's just like, what, like, what do you mean? How does that, ju- how does that just happen? You must yeah. tell the story from start to finish of how you arrived at his house. Tell me every single detail. What did his house look like? What did he have in there? Was he working on anything? Did you snap pictures of drawings? Like, let's go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's incredible, man. Um, so I know you're kind of doing the energy drink thing. You mm-hmm. have O2 Heroes that you've done where you, you play some fighting games. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to kind of try and get the scoop and just get a little bit of the future here. Uh, do you have anything else you're kind of working on under the banner? Any other kind of projects that you can kind of give us a little sneak peek of if you're yeah, not yeah, quite yeah. ready to reveal? Oh, no, I, I, I already had it prepared. I'm going to drop you an exclusive. You're going to get an exclusive oh, reveal yes. on this episode. I think that might so, be the first ever like uh, like official exclusive in a mock yeah, history. Like, <laughs> so this is huge, huge. So so I in an attempt not to get bored and not to get overwhelmed for a while doing energy drinks over and over and over again made it seem like homework, like I wasn't having fun doing the podcast. So I started doing yeah, a whole yeah. bunch of different shows, trying to trying to switch it up and just like have a good time doing different things, which is why I did a video game one, because that's different. I did a comic book one, but um, I, I've been talking to my girlfriend and her best friend, and they're going to be guests on a new show. We, we, we're starting to, to get stuff out. Uh, th- this is a new show. It's going to be called DJ's Dozen. I don't know... Ooh. Yeah, I, I don't know how many episodes we're gonna do. Probably same thing as the other ones. We're we're gonna do three, get bored, and never go back to it. But we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do three episodes where essentially, um, so the, I, I, so the first episode we're gonna do it's gonna be on the front bottoms, and um, the the three of us are all big big fans of that group, yeah. and the three of us have to collectively come up with a twelve song greatest hits playlist. And we're, we're going to discuss it on mic and we're going to have to vote on it. But there's going to be like gimmicks. It's going to be almost like a game show where it was like we have oh. to like where we have to like vote and like narrow it down. And then we're going to end up with like a greatest hits playlist uh, at, at the end of it. And right. then just like hopefully because everybody likes music, that is something just like, again, more accessible than energy drinks. People can listen to it. I can get people come on as guests and we can talk about like argument's sake. You're really 
I don't know. I'm I'm trying to think of a band that I I don't listen to, but just like I, I want to know who that band is. Just like argument's sake, you're, you're a big fan of like some some band from like Wyoming I've never heard of, but you want to do it. <laughs> let let me know. I'll binge their discography. I'm in a truck 12 hours a day. All I do is listen listen to stuff. I'll binge their discography, <laughs> and then you and I will get a third guest. And we can do this band from Wyoming. I'm in. It's like very easy. It's loosey goosey, and like I think it's a good way to get more people involved than again just trying Red Bull all the time. <laughs> I found this one band from Idaho. They put out two albums between 1991 and 1992. Let's, 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 let's go. Let's pick out 12. (laughs) No, I think that's an awesome idea. Like as soon as you said that, I was just like, Mm -hmm. man, I just started like going through like the list of like all my favorite bands. I'm just like, what would 12 from that band be? No way. What would 12 Mm -hmm. from that band be? No, wait, what would 12 from that band be? So then what you could do is that get, that gets huge. And then you could just have the actual bands come on and be like, what are your 12 favorite songs that you've ever done? (laughs) I would love that. If if I could convince bands to, I don't know if they would feel comfortable like ranking their own songs. Right. I could get like bands that I'm a fan of to then talk about other bands that we are fans of. I think that would be cool. But (laughs) That, that would be so cool. I just think, yeah, how, how, oh. Yeah, if you ever pull that off, let me know. I have I have some bands that I would love to just if you get the bands to come on and just be like, I'm the third guest, absolutely, because <laughs> I, I would I would absolutely kill yeah. for that. Um, no, I think that God, that's such a great idea. I, I'm just again, you've got me distracted now because I'm just thinking of mm-hmm. all of like possibilities I'm going through. Oh, what's that band? What's that band? What's mm-hmm. that band? And I think you're right too. It's it's especially kind of like in our circle that we find ourselves. Like your mm-hmm. your show and this content you produce is unique. It it really crosses more of like the boundaries that a lot of us are in. Like a lot of us mostly stick to like just video game stuff. Mm-hmm. So to have someone that we can go to and be like, hey, like yeah, I want to talk about energy drinks or I yeah. want to talk about uh, go to like fighting games or music or mm-hmm. I, I think that that would be that'd be really cool because we don't <laughs> video games is all I know. So I don't really get a chance <laughs> to ever go outside my comfort zone too much. Mm-hmm. So that's that's really awesome. Um, do you have any thing, any kind of advice like someone comes to you or let's say like two more kids come and say they want to interview a community leader? It's you and they ask you for advice on start on starting a podcast. Do you have any kind of advice that you give people that would want to start a podcast, whether it's energy drinks or, or like literally mm-hmm. anything? I I would say do it for fun and don't I, I know it's going to be hard. Don't even look at the numbers. Don't look at the listens. I I remember I got real in my head, just like so. When we started BDE, we were like putting it out on YouTube only, and it was just like very much. Mm-hmm. We did this in our office. It was for us, and then we put it on Spotify, and we got on Twitter, and like people. I remember when we hit like six listens, and it went like out. It went beyond the people in my office. I was like, whoa, people are listening to this, right? And then we and then we hit double digits, and then it was like going up, and then like. One week, like we lost listeners and like it messed with me. I was like, I was just so used to like this growth. I'm just like, wait a minute. If Mikey from six months ago could see me now, he'd be so mad. Just like, we didn't do this for listens. We did this (laughs) as as, like, as an excuse to hang out and have a good time and have fun and like laugh. And so just like, if if you and your buddies want to start a podcast, do it. Make sure it stays fun. Um, I I don't want to say don't put too much effort into it because you got to make sure it's like, it's a decent enough podcast. You got to put a little bit of effort into it. But like, if at any point it starts feeling tedious or it's not fun or it feels like homework, take a step back. Remember why you're doing this, and then get together with your friends and try it again. But just like, don't don't the odds of you being the next Conan O'Brien or just like <laughs> the the two the two women from the office who are rewatching the office. The odds of you doing that. I'm not saying don't strive for that. But like that shouldn't be the reason you start a podcast to right. be number three on the Spotify charts. Start a podcast like to have a good time with your friends. And as long as you stick to that, just like you're good, you're golden. If I could just put a disclaimer out there for if anyone famous happens to come across this episode or any time, uh, if famous people could just get out of podcasting, like you're yes. already famous. Could you please leave this medium for like the everyman so we can try and get famous? I would appreciate it. <laughs> It's like, I, I have nothing wrong against the people from the office, but it's like, you're going to remember that forever. It's like, why do you also need a podcast? Yes. Like, like for, for real, like, please get out of the way. Um, <laughs> no, I, I personally resonate with your advice and I, I agree a hundred percent. I host my spot. Or I, I host my podcast on, on anchor. Mm-hmm. So it automatically uploads to like Spotify and all that stuff. And they have 
statistic tools and it's it's basically free. It's why I've stuck with Anchor because yeah. I'm too cheap to actually pay for a better podcast hosting service. Uh, but they have an app, so it makes it really easy to like just have the app open and look at the numbers. And uh, a couple of times throughout this journey in my last podcast, SideQuesting, I would just catch myself every Wednesday episode comes out. I'm looking at stats. I'm looking at stats. How many people are listening? Are my listens going up? Have people listened yet? Like, how's it doing? And uh, yeah, that can create a lot of anxiety because we're hardwired in our brains to like mm -hmm. numbers go up means affirmation and we want the affirmation yeah. that feels good. And when we're not getting the affirmation that we're used to or we see it go down, we're like, oh, no, what did I do? Did I do something wrong? We tend to mm -hmm. overanalyze. And um, yeah, even like halfway through this year, I was doing that and I like had to like log off anchor and just be like, I'm not going to look anymore. I'm not going to look. And uh, I think you need to realize, too, that if you go to start a podcast that you're going to have up weeks, you're going to have down weeks like some mm -hmm. people. Maybe you just didn't get around to listening one week or maybe the thing you talked about wasn't popular with uh, a certain group that you listen to. So they're just not going to listen to the episode. And like, that's OK. That's not an indictment on you. It's just like certain people like different things. So, yeah, no, that's 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 really good advice. The, the numbers and the listen thing is, I think, something that that literally everybody struggles with. And when you start to worry about that, it kind of like affects mm -hmm. the way the content that you put out, because then you're just trying to record things for likes and listens and numbers and you're not being true to yourself and mm -hmm. i've i've caught myself a couple times doing that so that's that's an awesome lesson to uh remember it's it's not always easy especially and i understand too it's like you record things because you want people to like stuff yeah. and you want people to listen you want to share your likes with people and when you don't see that it you know it, you're just like well why am i doing this but if mm -hmm. you really take it from the angle it's like hey i'm doing this for fun i'm talking to people I really like, like I've met all these awesome people. So of course, mm -hmm. like I want to record stuff with them. I think that's definitely the, the right way to go too. And then things will fall into place after that. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then you just get better and you learn and you, you know, you mm -hmm. learn things every episode that you didn't know. And it comes into a culmination where you're yelling about kingdom Hearts stuff for four hours and then, mm -hmm. you know, you just go crazy. But, um, <laughs> uh, Yeah. That's awesome, Mikey. I appreciate you kind of giving me an insight, a little bit of your mm -hmm. show here. Um, before we start talking about video game stuff and, and going on to that, is there anything else you want to mention about your show? Is there anything else that you do? Um, let me see here. Uh, I'm going through my notes now, and no, not not, not really. We we cover most of that. I dropped the exclusive. That was like the the big thing I have. Uh, I don't. That's I don't huge. know. I don't know when that that that's coming out. It's just like it's difficult to get all three people's schedules aligned. Oh yeah. But um, hopefully that comes out. And if like if that's received well and just like so. Oh, uh, another bit of podcasting advice I have. My, my philosophy Ooh, yes, to podcasting on. is. Never say no. So just like if people like I like legitimately, like if someone was to come to me, like there's this band that has two albums. They're from Idaho from 91, 92. <laughs> Do you want to do it? It's like, of course, just like that's an experience. Just like I get to listen to a band I've never listened to. I get to either be on mic and hang out with like a podcasting friend I have or get the experience to meet someone new and and do that and just like I'm, I'm not going to tell them no I won't do that band no you can't be on my podcast just like if there's an opportunity just go screw it I'm in just like let, let's do it so just like so that that's another bit of advice I have for that but as as for DJs doesn't I don't know when it's going to come out I'm I'm hoping by like we're already in October, so I'm hoping by like Thanksgiving, I'm hoping we can like either this month or next month, I can get everybody to do that. But like that should be coming up at some point. Just like all the games, you can just delay it into 2023 if you if you have to. It's it's no big yeah. deal. Everyone's doing that these <laughs> days. No, that's that's um that's also also really good advice. Uh, I had a point I was gonna make, but my I'm like my mind totally just went <laughs> blank all of a sudden. Like it completely just. I like completely blanked out. Never saying no. Um, no, yeah, I agree. I agree with you on that too. That's that's great advice. Like for me myself, I really like to stay inside my comfort zone. So I like to talk about games that I know, and I like to talk about other people about about video games. But uh, over the last couple of months, some projects I've been working on. Uh, I don't consider myself a retro video game player, mm -hmm. uh, but I've been asked to come on and do some retro video game stuff. And even though it's outside of my comfort zone, and I was really nervous because a lot of the people I was doing stuff with are really knowledgeable and I have a very high regard for people in the retro video game space. And I was just like, oh, if I come on and I have these stupid opinions, I'm going to get judged because these people know retro games so well. And I was able to come on and, and take part in the projects and and just participate, not having played these games before and, you know, 
had a really good time and no one really judged me. And everyone said, I really <laughs> enjoyed you having you on. So yeah, even if it's outside of your comfort zone, um, I'll be making an appearance a couple weeks on a show where I'm going to be talking about um, pop culture stuff. And I normally, the pop culture is way outside of the realm of stuff that I know. So, uh, and just, yeah, just, if you think it's something you could enjoy, just, just go on and, and be yourself and, and try to and do a little bit of homework. Try and be as prepared yeah. as you can. Don't, if you know, if you're going on to play, in an old ass video game and you don't you didn't play the game you don't know what you're talking about that <laughs> it's not really good to the per it's not really fair to the person that show that you're appearing on try and do a little bit of homework but yeah yeah just just don't worry about it go on and be yourself and you know the biggest thing for me as i was worried about other people judging me and it's mm-hmm. everybody one of the coolest things about this podcasting circle where and it's like everybody's pretty cool and yeah nobody really like looks down on anybody else for having any less knowledge or having different opinions like we for the most part, amicably get along with each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't see the the private Discord messages and stuff, so <laughs> people could be shit talking each other in, in in the DMs. That's always possible, but yeah, just don't don't ever say no. Um, the hardest guest appearance is always like the first one when somebody asks you to come on. Mm-hmm. So once you get past that one, it's it's great. And doing stuff with other people is like yeah. the greatest thing ever. It's it's so great. Um, which is really why I wanted to base unlockables like around guest appearances because. Mm-hmm. My old shows, I was like, oh, nobody ever wants to come on and, and do and, and so I did most of that stuff by myself. And mm-hmm. when I started this project, I was like, I want a majority of my episodes to like have people on and just interview them and talk to them. So, yeah, don't don't ever say no. Just just do it. I believe is what Nike says. Please don't yeah. sue the, the podcast. <laughs> and I think I just heard a, a cease and desist lawyer come to my doorstep. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah. No, Mikey, if you're cool, let's jump into some video game stuff next. Yeah, let's do it. question i have on here is just real simple real open-ended i always like to ask where did your journey with video games start so as you mentioned previously if you're going to be a guest make sure to do homework make sure you 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 know (laughs) the game you played i i did a bunch of research into this trying to figure out exactly where it started and and i i have i have two answers for you two points in time yeah the earliest the earliest memory i have was these Fisher Price video games for like kindergarten kids. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. And I <laughs> and I had to like I spent way too long today trying to find those games. But um they I, I have I have them here on my phone. Let me get them. It was I was about the, to say I was about to Google them and said you t- and said it took a long time to find them. <laughs> it was the Fisher Price Great Adventure series. There was three of them. There was Fisher Price Castle pirate ship and wild western town i can't tell you a single thing about any of these games i just remember having them as a child and and that's it i don't oh i was gonna say they must have been fun but just like i i don't remember anything about them except that they existed and that's like my earliest gaming memory you know (laughs) okay yeah so i look up i see the games and i see the you know there was an actual line of toys as well yes yeah yeah, yeah. and they, they had that castle, which I remember mm-hmm. not. I didn't have it as a kid, but I saw it as a kid. Like this castle mm-hmm. was like in the preschool playroom where I play. Oh, my yes, God. Yes, exactly. Oh, my God. Yeah. So that was like right at the start of just like computer games, like becoming a thing for like pe- like people were just starting to get computers in their homes. Uh, so just like that was like an, an early memory I have of that. Um, but growing up, I didn't really have I didn't have any video game consoles growing up until I was a little bit older. And I remember one year for like my birthday or something someone gave me i'm trying to figure out when this is like let's say a ps1 game but i i didn't have a ps1 so we went to return it and i had to get something for the computer instead and i got a it was the sonic action four pack sonic action four pack and despite the name 
it came with like 13 Sega games, like like a, a spread across a couple different like CDs, and I would put them in the computer and I could play them. And that's like where my love for Sonic started. Sonic's like one of my like all time favorite series, just because I grew up. These were the only games I had. And then right. so it came with like all of the Sonic and Knuckles, this weird racing game, Sonic R, which is like they never did anything with. And there's just some made up characters for that game and that never appeared again. And then Sega Smash Pack 2, which was cool because in addition to Sonic, it came with like six or seven other Sega games. So then like I would play those a bunch. And like one of the games on that Shining Force is like makes like top five favorite video games of all time for me. Like I absolutely love Shining Force because that's like I remember playing that as a kid. I remember playing that in high school. I remember playing that in college. And it's like one of those games that like when I first started, I was like, oh, this is fun, but I wasn't like necessarily good at video games. I didn't understand how strategy, how leveling up works on how I can't just like run into it. It's like a strategy RPG. And as I got older, I kept looking at it and like, I was like smarter. I'm like, Oh, I, I know I, I need to use strategy for this. And I thought it was like right. cool that I played as a kid, had fun, but wasn't good. Played a little bit older, still wasn't good. And like, I, I beat it for the first time in like, senior year of high school freshman year of college maybe i've been playing oh, it on nice. and off since i was like six but just like <laughs> the thing is i would play until i got bored put it down three years later it's like i don't remember where i am i don't know the story i'm just gonna restart it and, and i did that like four or five times before finally beating it but just like because i played shining force like for like 20 years now 22 years now just like I've only beaten it once, but I've been, I've been playing it for 20 years. Like, it's one of my favorite games. And it came with, like, that Sega Sonic CD collection I got because I had to trade it in. Right. Mm-hmm. No, I, I looked it up, and I actually managed to find it on eBay. Someone's selling it for $80. The the, uh, the, the Sonic 4-pack? Yeah, it's, it says Sonic <laughs> Action 4-pack. It's yellow on there. I see it has Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic R, Sonic CD, and then it has yeah. the, the Smash Pack 2 mm-hmm. on there. Uh, and with seven classic sega hits on it. oh my god the sticker is still from best buy on there it says 14.99 <laughs> they're selling it for 80 dollars. <laughs> holy cow that's i didn't even know something like this existed mm-hmm. that's that's wild what a what a deal though 15 dollars and you get like 13 games that's, yes ugh. i know it was so good <laughs> what's when and now it's they won't even give you one game for 70 dollars a completed yeah. full game for 70 dollars <laughs> and they're giving away 13 games for 15 bucks back then Ugh. Man, inflation has been absolutely, yeah. absolutely terrible. So, um, so, so has, has gaming kind of been something you've carried throughout the entirety of your life? Uh, the question is, what has it meant to you in your life? But I guess mm-hmm. I should ask, is it something you've kind of stuck with throughout your life? Like, what has it kind of meant to you personally? Yeah, so so it's evolved as like to what it means to me like over time. Like when I was little, I played the Sonic game from the computer. I had fun and then... Like I would go to a friend's house and they had video game consoles that I didn't have. And that was fun because I would get to play games with them. And then when I got older, I eventually started like running video game tournaments. And I met a whole bunch of people through that. And I like I ran events for years and I did a whole bunch of stuff with that. And like that's a whole set of experiences that like I didn't think I was going to get when I when I first started playing video games. I think that's a lot of like a whole group of experiences that a lot of people don't get to experience because they're not like interested or involved in like the esports scene. But mm-hmm. I thought that was like a really unique way of like meeting people and like like I made a whole bunch of friends doing that. Uh, I, I did it for years. We would hang out every Sunday in in this basement of a comic shop, and like we had a great time. And like I used to like travel to go to tournaments. And people, I remember one time this dude came from West Virginia to go to one of my tournaments. I'm just like. Dude, what are you doing in this comic wow. shop basement? You're in West yes, Virginia. West Virginia. <laughs> yeah, he was like visiting his mom or something. He's like, yeah, I saw the Facebook post, so I'm here. Let's let's hang out and just like. Nobody ever talks about West Virginia. Sorry about any no. listeners in West Virginia. That I, I may know. Have offended. It, no, I, I think he's like literally the only person I've ever met from West Virginia. I unfortunately don't remember his name. I just remember him being <laughs> a guy from West Virginia. But it's like it's it's wild that just like specifically with like the smash bros community and i'm sure it's the same for like like other games but this guy came from west virginia had a great time hung out we were friends for that day never saw him again uh i i know plenty of people who like will go to california for a tournament and they will just like post in the california like facebook group for smash bros like hey i'm coming for the weekend 
like hotels are too expensive. Does anybody have a couch I can sleep on? And like dozens of people respond, hell yeah, come on in. Just like you play the game, instantly a friend. And like, they'll just hang out and like do that. I, th- I think that's super cool that there's like this level of camaraderie between people playing this like one set of game, like one set of games that like then translates to like, like real life, like events and stuff, which I think is like a unique experience as compared to just like, I've done like a plenty of like online gaming, but I think there's like something right. about going to an in-person event, having hundreds of people there, everybody just like being excited about the same thing. It's kind of like the same feeling you get going to like a midnight movie and like everyone's there for the premiere. You know, everyone's excited about the same thing. You're just all right. ready to like have party and have a good time. It's like that, but with video games. And I think that's really cool. That's that's so crazy that people are just like, yeah, just come sleep on my couch. I don't mm-hmm. I don't tr- ever since uh, my wife and I watched the uh, the Jeffrey Dahmer show oh, on Netflix yeah. that this came out with. <laughs> and now it's just like, I don't trust anybody. I, I will not show I'm not sleeping on anybody's couch. I'm not taking drinks from anybody like no, mm-hmm. no chance. It's not happening. Uh, that's cool. And that kind of leads into the next point I had. I, I was I wanted to ask you a little bit mm-hmm. about it, uh, you know, through what you just told me and listening yeah. to your appearances and other shows and your show as well. I know that you uh, you used to organize these esports events mm-hmm. these these tournaments and that's something i've always been super fascinated about i haven't had the opportunity i've always wanted to go to some kind of live gaming event and yeah. uh you know even though i don't like league of legends like my cousin's been to a couple live mm-hmm. league game uh, matches and he says there's it's so awesome being there just yeah. with everybody or um you know i'd love i'm not a huge into the fighting game community but i would love to to go to evo one day i think evo would be mm-hmm. so so lit and um so i just kind of want wanted to kind of ask like how did you get into organizing how did you get into to running those and mm-hmm. and just a little bit of that story so super smash brothers melee was like our favorite game as a kid that's like the game that like my group of friends like every time we met up like we would go to mark's basement and, and that's the game we would play oh yeah and i remember like going to youtube one day and i typed in like smash bros marth get better or something and then just like this this guy ken who was like an amazing player back in the day he had a whole bunch of like youtube tutorials on like oh you're doing this you should be doing that instead i was like right. wow i didn't even know you could do that and then like i looked into it and like ken is like one of the greatest like smashers like in like the competitive history because he went to tournaments and did a whole bunch, bunch of stuff i'm like oh there's tournaments for this so i was always aware of it but I wasn't like actively participating in it until college. I remember I moved out and like me and a couple friends from from college, like like we like rented like an apartment together. And the weekend we moved in was the weekend Evo was happening. And oh. I, I don't know what led up to that, but I like made the decision like I'm going to watch Evo this year. It seems fun. I like Smash Bros. I'm going to watch this uh, big event. For people who, who don't know what Evo is, it's essentially like the Super Bowl of like fighting games. It's like it takes place in July or August and it's like the biggest event of the year. People come from all over the world like to fight and like that's like the most like prestigious event that, that there is for, for fighting games. And I remember it was a mess because <laughs> we're, we're, we're like we're unpacking stuff, we're getting stuff set up and like we had to schedule the cable company to come and put Wi-Fi in like the day we moved in because we were moving in the day Evo started. And then it's like, we had people coming over to later that night to watch it. And like, we had like, we didn't even like have the house unpacked it. We were like sitting on like cushions and like two chairs. And the only thing we had unpacked was the TV, the TV and like the, and like the, the, the fi box that we had, that we had set up and like, and like we, we watched Evo and that was fun. And then, uh, randomly like the next year at school i walked by and like on the first floor of like one of the buildings where we had classes there's a bunch of people playing smash bros on tv and i walked over them like hey are are we all playing melee they're like yeah so like i hopped in i played a couple games like oh this was fun do you do you do this a lot they go we have a tournament every wednesday like every wednesday they're like yeah wow yeah so i started going to that every wednesday and then I remember seeing a comic shop uh, that I used to go to. They were hosting, it was Smash 4, the one for the Wii U at the time. And they they had a poster in the window saying, just like, come to our comic shop. We're doing events for this. And I wanted to pitch doing Melee instead because that 
that was a little like that's the game I liked. So right. I, I walked in there with uh, Ian, who is the the first guest on the the Behind the Pencils podcast. Uh, clearly, just like the two guys on the comic book podcast, we went to the comic book store and uh, and we pitched like, "Hey, can we run this game instead of that game?" It's like we're not even running the other game anymore. By all means, Sunday Sunday mornings, it's yours. So I ran events every Sunday from like noon to six. And I did that for two years just because I saw a sign for it and I liked my game better than the game that they, that they were running. And he was like, sure. And then we did that. And like between the comic shop event and the uh, college campus event, it just like the two of them started doing a lot of like crossover. People would go to both of them and we formed like our own little like community that that was cool because uh so um i'm stuttering but i'm from new york and like saturdays like the big events would take place in manhattan would take place in the city and like top players would go there that's the big deal but like we didn't really do that arguments sake, they were the equivalent of joe rogan and i'm over in like my little comic shop basement on sundays doing, (laughs) doing like my indie podcast bullshit and just like it was cool because we didn't have a very large community but we had like a group of friends and like we were all around the same skill level. So like some players were really good, but like we were just, again, it was an excuse to hang out every Sunday afternoon. And like one of the, the coolest things about that is we were all like the tournament is over. We were all done. A gaggle of like 16 of us would walk three blocks and we would always go to Wendy's for dinner when it was over. Cause there was a Wendy's a couple blocks away. And just like, Hell yeah. And that became like part of the tradition. And <laughs> Like sometimes people would come to an event and then like leave and then just like whether or not like you were like, I, I don't want to say you were in because that makes it sound like you were clicks. But like when you were accepted as like you're one of us now, you are a friend, just like you're part of the community, you're ready to have fun. It was like when they felt comfortable enough to go to Wendy's with this group of 16 strangers <laughs> that they would never met. That was like the cool you came to Wendy's you're cool now you're one of us and like that was i I don't want to say hazing because going to wendy's isn't like that big of a deal but that was like the (laughs) the final test like oh cool you have accepted us as like you want to be part of this community you come to wendy's now you're in i think i think that's really cool (laughs) wendy's was the rite of passage yes that's exactly the word i was looking for yes (laughs) This is the easiest cult induction I've ever been to. It's just like, I just have to order a Baconator. That's that's really easy, man. Wow. <laughs> we um so so we used to after every six months we would do a ranking of the ten best players who would come to them. And I remember one ranking period. It was a Wendy's themed like graphic image at the end. <laughs> so it was right around the time like the sassy's Wendy like the sassy Wendy's girl memes started coming up. And so the ten. <laughs> The 10 best players, they all had like, instead of p- their picture, it was a like some anime version of like the Wendy's mascot, <laughs> except this one player, he, he never came to Wendy's. He would come, he, he was like the second best like there. He was really good, but he wouldn't like hang out. You know, he would like come get his money and leave. And like, we didn't like that. We're not playing this, this game, this 20 year old game in this sweaty basement to win 30 bucks and walk away. We're, we're going to hang out. So like... <laughs> There was a little bit of an issue there. So I remember when, when we did it, everybody had a cool anime picture of the Wendy's girl, except this one kid who never came to Wendy's. He His graphic was the like the real life picture of like the great granddaughter of like Mr. Wendy's or whatever. <laughs> and, so, and then everybody thought that was so funny. Just like whenever that kid like got ranked again, that was his default picture from there on out. It's like I remember one year – the theme was avatar characters and it was a picture of all avatar characters. And then the real life Wendy's girl was just like, that was <laughs> always his picture from there, from there on out. <laughs> oh my God. That <laughs> Wendy's please sponsor this podcast. That would be incredible. Oh my God. That's, that's such a funny story. I was not, I was honestly not expecting that turn, but dude, this guy's so serious. That he's going to have the real, I'm trying to think of what is, what is the Wendy's guys? What is the Wendy's guys? It was like, um, I'm having a mind blank. I know this because I studied brands and companies in college and I should know. Wasn't it Dave? Dave something was the Wendy's yes. guy, right? Uh, it was Dave because it's like the menu is Dave's Baconator. Yes, I, I, yes. I, I, I don't know what his last name is. I just know it's Dave because it's on the menu. I have to. I, I'm sorry. I have to know this Wendy's phone. <laughs> 
Dave Thomas. Yes, I did. Okay, Dave yeah, Thomas. yeah. Okay, I, I did know that, but I just on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> That's funny. Also, kind of weird. Um, man, I gotta say, those are like those 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 college times and like that time kind of around there right after is it really is a magical time. We can. We won't sit here and argue about whether college is worth it. I think that's a different <laughs> podcast for sure. And if it's worth taking on hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt to to get a piece of paper that says you're smart, whether or not it's worth it, that's like I said, that's another thing. But uh, I think the the cultural and the experience you get in the mm-hmm. people you meet are are certainly worth that price. I remember yeah. we my first year when I lived in the dorms, you know, I got on campus. I came from a really small school in a farm town to living in the city of Chicago, classmates, I have 5,000 classmates all of a sudden. It's mm-hmm. absolutely nuts. And I get into the dorms, I'm a little bit timid, like I don't know people that well, and I've always gamed, like gaming's been part of my DNA, but I don't know if people like it to the same level that I do. I don't know what these people are like. You know, I've been in a small farm town my whole life. And, you know, the first night we kind of have like a floor, like get together, icebreaker, and then the one guy's like, all right, I'm going back to my room, my door's open, come play Call of Duty Zombies. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Uh, I'm like, we're, we're doing this. And so from then on, like everyone just had their doors open and like we'd be playing mm-hmm. Call of Duty Zombies in one room and across the way they'd be playing Mario Kart. And then like the room over here would have sports <laughs> on. So you could like run over here and like go see what sports are going on. And it, it you really just do meet such a cross section of amazing people that like share the same yeah. likes as you and and realize that everyone else is just pretty much a giant nerd too so you don't have to be mm-hmm. be afraid and i never got into the the smash bros scene really but um i was the best player on my floor and uh, that that dorm floor specifically so i'm pretty yeah, proud of that i i was about to say i i was about to i was about to pull up the the dms you specifically told me you were the best <laughs> smasher on your floor so i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> That was that was a different lifetime ago, Mikey. I don't know if I'm still I'm, I don't know if I'm that same man anymore. That was like, you know, the, the retired boxer coming out of mm-hmm. out of retirement. I was never that good. But uh, yeah, and, and we would have our kind of same late night tradition, too. We'd have, uh, you know, we'd, we'd play, we'd be up, we'd be drinking, having a yeah. good time, whatever. And it's the weekend, you know, it's Saturday you have to get up and it'd be like two, three in the morning. And outside of our, our dorm building, there was this this famous location in, in Chicago right off of the highway. It's, it's called Jim's. And it's mm-hmm. this just square building. It's you walk up, you order and like they're making the food right there. It's just like this like hole in the wall place run by, you know, the like coolest Polish dudes you'll ever meet. Shout out to Poland and Polish dudes make some bomb ass <laughs> food. And you just you could go at like three in the morning. It was open 24 hours and you would just, you know, they'd have Polishes and Browers and then. Yeah, I like to get a burger and they just hand you like the biggest, greasiest burger, mm-hmm. just like, loaded with onions and that you'd ever have. And oh, man, it was just that we did that every time after we were done playing. Like, all right, we're going to go to bed. But first, got to make a pilgrimage to gyms. It's tradition. <laughs> and and unfortunately, a, a couple I'm sorry, we're just swapping the tradition stories now. Uh, a couple of years ago, like someone said that like the building caught fire and so all hmm. of us we hadn't tech like me and a couple of my college friends like hadn't texted in years we all texted each other we're like yo we're like jim's burned down right jim's is on fire <laughs> so jim's brought us back together uh and now they're not open 24 hours anymore because it's it's too dangerous in the city to be out that late so it's a shame uh but yeah uh besides the wendy's thing and that guy i was gonna ask do, do you have any other like couple favorite moments or experiences doing that 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 kind of stick out in your head yeah, there's a there, there's one in particular. It is simultaneously just like one of the most fun times I've had, and also like the like the single biggest disappointment I've ever had from like from an event organizer standpoint. So I was leaving New York and I was going to move to the Carolinas, and before I left, I wanted to run like a big tournament. So we used to do weekly tournaments and we would get maybe 16 to 20 people because that's all the basement could fit i wanted to do like right a bigger tournament i want like to to like rent a space and like charge money and blah 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 and i'm reading the newspaper and i see there's some local comic-con happening at the college that like i go to that runs events and it said looking for vendors for like comic books artists and video games so i shoot him an email like hey video games just like art can, can I run a tournament? Like, that's perfect. We were looking for people to run a tournament. We were looking to run Street Fighter, but if you're interested in Smash Bros, we'll run Street Fighter and Smash Bros. I'm like, perfect. Nice. And um, so 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 these guys, they they have a whole plan, and I'm going back and forth with them. And this was gonna be like my farewell tournament. This was gonna be like the big deal. This was gonna be like a thank you, New York. This is you're awesome. This, this, is, this is what you get before I leave. Yeah. And then 
little by little, the guys running the convention, they're just like, oh, yeah, you know what? We can't do that. Oh, no, we can't do this. I, I know we said we were going to do X, Y, and Z. Can't do any of them. You know how you said you wanted to do one, two, three? You're not allowed to do those either. And then it was supposed to be like a two-day event. And I was, they promised me like they were going to advertise and a whole bunch of stuff. And they were going to get like hundreds of people to come. I'm like, great, because it has to like last two days. They did no advertising. No one showed up. Everybody who was there was like people I brought. And then, so we ended up having 40 people, which is like larger than like the basement tournaments we did, but like not what I had in mind. Right. And then like a whole bunch of people who weren't regulars came because there was like, there was $2,000 on the line, which I will say oh, they, they put that up. That's the, that's the one thing they did. They put up 2K. So wow. originally, 1,000 was going to go to Smash Bros. 1,000 was going to go to Street Fighter. Either no one signed up or they couldn't find anyone to run Street Fighter. So they just outright canceled it. And they go, Mikey, you get the extra $1,000 now. I'm like, great. Nice. And like, <laughs> I'm thinking there's $2,000 up for grabs. This will get people like to come in, blah, blah, blah. But it was a little bit expensive because you had to like buy a day pass to this whole convention type deal. And then just like, the convention people didn't pay the winners out until like months later. And now like, Oh my I, God. Like I moved out of state and I was still getting emails from my players. Like, Hey, why am I like, you owe me $600. Why do I not get paid? I'm like, dude, I don't, this isn't on me. I'm, I, I was literally just shouting names. You have to like, this is the person you need to contact you to get paid. And like, it was a mess. It was just like, I had such big hopes and it was such a disappointment. It was like awful. And just like, even like, they said, we're going to supply X number of TVs and X number of like Wii's for you to play your game. I'm like, great. I have exactly eight TVs and eight Wii's and my buddy has two. So I'm bringing 10. That's all I can do. They go, okay, they didn't bring a single TV. Everything we had there were the only ones that I brought. Like they literally, they didn't provide me anything. Man. So then like that was real, that was disappointing. And it was supposed to be a two day event. But so few people showed up. We finished that shit in like five hours. So then right. everyone's like, we don't, there's nothing to come back tomorrow. You can if you want. It's just going to be like, you can hang out. And then the only people who came back the next day were like the friends that I've made over the last two years. Everyone was like, yeah, yesterday sucked. Today doesn't have to. And just like, we spent the whole day, we had this massive venue space. It was like a legitimate like ballroom. We had a venue space for like, 14 of us playing video games. We're like, all right, let's, we're going to have fun for eight hours today. And then like the convention people, they had like, I have three $10 Amazon gift cards you can use as like prizes. I'm like, okay. And then <laughs> we, we literally just like dicked around for eight hours and it was great. It was like such, it was the exact opposite of what the previous day was. And like, it's not what I wanted. I want it like this big send off i wanted it to be like my fur i wanted this to be like my crowning achievement as like as an event organizer but then what happened in the end was like the most like, like i said previously we were like the small indie scene it was like the epitome of that it was just like friends getting together not caring about anything no money on the line we just got together and had fun and like we played the game that we all loved and we had a good time and i thought that was like that was a much happier ending than what I thought what I was going to get. And then at the end of it, I was like, you know what? That's like the real send off I want. I got to spend that with like my friends, not a bunch of strangers who were in it for money. I'm glad it happened this way. So it's just like that. That's like the, that's like my biggest up and my biggest down. But like that, that's like the memory that first comes to mind. No, I think that's awesome. First of all, uh, fuck those convention fuck organizers. Those guys. Oh, yeah, fuck those guys. Okay, if you're so, listening, yo, if you're listening, you you're stupid. <laughs> I, I I don't want to derail this, but like my co-host, he 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 went to college in Florida, and I was talking to him one time, and he said that they used to run conventions in Florida, and they literally like got people stopped going and like chased them out of the state. So then they've been like. They did it in New York after they left Florida. They did it one more time at a different location in New York. And then New York was like, we don't want you anymore. And then they moved like some, just like, it's just a massive grift. And they just go state to state doing these conventions. <laughs> just running conventions. Yes. But the thing oh is my just God. like, and they were like, and they asked if there were people that I knew who wanted to work the event. And they were like, <laughs> let me know. I'll specifically put them in the video game floor so they can like assist you in stuff. And then they... I had two people sign up 
and they got assigned other stations. So they came to this convention. They couldn't even like play the games. Right. And exactly. At the end of it, I worked three days. I didn't get paid for any of that. Oh my God. <laughs> I, it's like, I, I, I know I just did a whole thing about like how, like I'm not in it for the money. I was like in it for fun, but just like, he didn't like at the end of it. I'm like, cool. So like three days is like, yeah, we, uh, we can't actually pay you anymore. I was like, oh, fuck, man. <laughs> but yeah, so fuck those guys. There's like, it seems like every state they go to, people just like hate their conventions. <laughs> so if you happen to come across this episode one day, wandering, state wandering convention throwers, just know that we <laughs> fucking hate you. <laughs> We're on to you. <laughs> We're on to you. We will, we will find you. In fact, <laughs> Mike and I are getting in the car right now. We're going to chase you down like Dateline and just be like, like gotcha journalism. Be like, what are you guys doing now? Do you remember throwing this tournament? You remember how you stiff all these people away from money? <laughs> <laughs> that's wow, man. That's crazy. Yeah. But I think like you said too, I think it, you made such a great memory out of something that mm-hmm. wasn't quite what you expected. And at the end of it all, the Wendy's crew was there. I think that's all, yes, all that matters, that's, right? Everyone who was there that second day after that shitty first day, they were literally all part of the Wendy's crew. And I appreciate that <laughs> yes. so much. It's just like <laughs> that in my mind is like the epitome of like more so than playing video games. Like we had a community and like they showed up. And like I think I think that's like the takeaway from this. Just like more so than just playing games like we had a community. And I think that's like super cool and super fun and just like. Even if you're like not into Smash Bros, maybe if there's another game you like, just join a community, make friends, have fun. Just like TLDR, that's what you got to do. Yeah, unless it's a super toxic community, then then probably leave it. But yeah, no, I I definitely agree. Uh, No, it seems like uh, Smash community and fighting community seem like a great group of folks. And that was actually the next question on the outline. But you guys actually kind of touched on that, like what it was like being a part of that community. And Mm -hmm. I can't think of a, a better story to that, that exemplifies <laughs> that than than Wendy's. That's that's freaking awesome. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, we're getting close to the end. I always say this question for last. If you had to, it's not always easy. Uh, do you have a game that you consider your all time favorite or like a group of games that are very special to you? I, I do. So I, I mentioned most of them already. Um, number okay. one, definitely Ocarina of Time. Favorite game all time. I love it. And I know a lot of people are just like, oh, you just like, it's nostalgia from when you were a kid. It's not a good game. <laughs> I played I played that for the first time at 18. The, the game was like out for like over a decade. And like, it's already dated when I played it. Like I already, like I played a whole bunch of like newer Zelda games and I went back to it. I'm just like, this holds up. This is amazing. I love it. So yeah, don't, don't listen to the haters. It's still good. And then I'm just a big Zelda guy. So I, I like Breath of the Wild is also up there. That That's a great one. Oh, yeah. And then. Uh, just like melee, obviously, it, it's probably the game I've put the most number of hours into, and I think the fact that I've made so many friends and like have so many experiences like surrounding that game, I think just contributes to it. And then also Shining Force that I mentioned, just because that's like the game I've played since I was a kid, and like I'll continue to play it. So that's a lot of fun. Great list. I can't argue with the Ocarina pick. That's all time mm-hmm. great. Uh, would explain why. My upcoming episode that will be a week old when this episode launches, but I asked for music submissions and you <laughs> very quickly gave me a track from Ocarina. So that that yes. pick makes sense now. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I, I have a lot of memories. I didn't play as much uh, Melee, but I have, a, I have a lot of friendships that were formed around mm-hmm. the uh, the competitive, uh, the, the, the battles that we had in Smash. So uh, if, if you can find people that like to play Smash and enjoy it, that's yeah. a great way to make that's a great way to make friends. That's some of the ways I've made. Some of my best friends to this day is, is through those battles. So, This is right right around the sweet spot of how long I like my episodes to be. So nice. 
I, I really appreciate you coming on, man. This was this was so much fun. You had some great stories. The man, the Wendy's thing kills me. It's yeah. that's so awesome. That's so cool. Uh, but I like to give you this time at the end of the episode. I say, I think I literally wrote it in the show notes. I say, if you got snake oil to shill, if you're selling alternative yep. cures to medicines, <laughs> member memberships to any kind of cult, like this is your time to share whatever you have. Um, I am actively taking a- uh, applicants for my cult. The only thing you have to do is show Perfect. up to Wendy's, and that's fine. <laughs> Just uh, t- take a picture of you at Wendy's and tweet it to either at Mikey Tabletop or at BDE Pod. Instantly in the cult, um, I'll-, I'll shoot you like a little thank you text or something. Just like I'll, I'll send you like a, I'll send you the picture of of like like the the anime Wendy's girl. I'll- if-, if you join the Wendy's cult, I'll send you that. <laughs> But um, I was going to say, just like, yeah, you like if you're into energy drinks, cool. You can check out my podcast. My co even if you're not into energy drinks, my co-host explains it as it's like hot ones, but with energy drinks where it's not actually about <laughs> energy drinks. It's kind of just like the vessel for starting the conversation. Right. I will say like the earlier episodes, very much we review energy drinks. But as we progress, it's just like, ah. Do we really want to talk about energy drinks? Like I said, the one I did with Ryan, we talk about it for seven minutes. And then the rest of it right. is just like, he, he tells a story about how his kid just like was stealing from a farmer's market and just like, <laughs> because that's where the conversation went. So like the more recent episodes are like that. Uh, I definitely have more Owen Two Heroes uh, coming up. So for those of you that don't know about that, um, we take a fighting game that we have zero experience in, practice as little or as much as we... Uh, want for two <laughs> weeks and then we talk about it uh we'll actually like fight in the middle of the podcast it's going to be a youtube video you can see us like fight in the game and then we like review and discuss it at the end and that also goes back to like the fighting game community thing so if you come in last place um brackets are double elimination so you have to lose twice so if you come in last place you have zero wins and two losses so you say you went oh and two so like oh. that, that that that's where the name comes from. It, it's a little that's bit of just cool. like an in joke, yeah. Um, I d- I don't think I'll have any more of the comic book podcast. Maybe uh, I might actually hit up the comic book guy I was guesting with on on Ryan's podcast. If I get around to doing it, I'll, I'll see if he wants to do it. Maybe no promises. If it happens, it happens. And all of these are under the Big Drink Energy banner on Spotify. They're all. I know if you want to find video games and podcast uh, video games and comic books, you have to look up energy drinks. It's silly, but I don't feel like running four different socials and four different RSS feeds <laughs> for podcasts. I will eventually have four episodes and then teeter out. So just find everything at Big Drink Energy. As a person whose day to day job it is to run multiple accounts for things, <laughs> uh, yeah, one account is definitely the way to go for sure. So, and I, I don't know. I hope you know what you started at Pandora's box. Now I think. I'm putting out a call. Anybody that listens to this episode, I might mention in the Discord too. It's like, if you go to Wendy's, send Mikey a picture of how you picked a Wendy's. <laughs> I am not joking. Just like, if you go to Wendy's, send me a picture. I will love it. Um, about So when I moved to the South, maybe about four or five months after I left, uh, the comic shop decided to stop running the, the, the tournaments. Like the attendance got lower and lower. And they're like, ah, we're going to use that venue space for a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament instead. Whatever. But then for a while, like afterwards, like the group chat we had, people would just like go to Wendy's and like months later, people I haven't spoken to like in ages would just be like Rip Royals. Uh, th- th- that was it. The comic shop was Royal Collectibles and like the tournament was like like Royal Smash. So I would just like get a random text one day. Rip Royals. It's just like him eating a four for four. So just like I, w- I would love it. <laughs> Next time you're at a Wendy's. one out for the comic me. shop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pour one for the comic shop. Yeah. Just send me a picture of your Baconator. Send me a picture of your four for four. Send me a picture of just like you pointing like to the picture of Dave in, in the actual restaurant. I love it. Just like send it to me. <laughs> Oh my god, that's absolutely incredible! Yeah, we go to, we go to Wendy's at least a couple times a month because my we like to eat out sometimes. So yeah, I, I definitely I'll keep that in mind. My, my wife, my, I'm not going to tell my wife either. I'm just going to take it next time I'm in the drive through. Just take a picture of the menu board and she's like, "What are you doing?" Just be like, "Nothing. Don't don't worry about it. You don't need to know." So, uh, but yeah, uh, Mikey, thank you so much for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. This conversation was awesome. I appreciate you just sharing about your show, sharing about your time organizing tournaments. It was it was really awesome. And, uh, you know, all those links that you said, uh, if you're wanting to find Mikey, are in the episode description. That'll be all linked below. So definitely go follow him. Give him a 
follow. Yeah, if you happen to join one of the many, many discords that we're all in together, mm -hmm. uh, talk to us, say hi. We're super friendly. We don't we don't bite. And uh, yeah, Mikey, thank you again, man. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you. Just like this was an absolute blast. I am an egotistical podcaster. So not only do I love to talk, I love to talk about myself. So this was <laughs> the perfect opportunity. <laughs> I really appreciate it, man. And again, thank you to everybody out there who stopped in and listened. I, I, as always, every week, I really appreciate the time you, you take to stop in and listen to me stutter and not, and forget my thoughts and not complete sentences. It really, really does mean a lot to me. And as always, because I don't have a, a way to end the show anymore, I really need to come up with an outro. So uh, if you happen to find yourself in a Wendy's, just tell them that Mikey sent you. Take it easy, everybody.